Hey there, CPO here, and this is the first actual build video for the Raptor E700 that I'm doing as part of this series. We're going to start with the head, and then we're just going to work our way through the manual. I may deviate a little bit based on uh, either some things I thought might be uh, better to install at certain times or tips I've gotten. But this first video is going to start with the head, and we're going to pull out bag A. And... Uh, this bag contains pretty much everything you need for this head assembly and a whole bunch of little bags in there. So we're going to pull all these out. But really what I'm working on is uh, page 6 and page 7 uh, in the manual. Now I'm using this alcohol to clean up the hardware, um, cleaning out the screws, uh, pretty much anything with threads, but particularly that feathering shaft or the spindle, however you want to call it. Now I'm making sure that I get all the machine oil and all that stuff out of there. And I'm running these uh, bolts up through there with uh, basically a lot of alcohol on them just to uh, get everything cleaned out. Now I know people who will actually light this on fire after you uh, get alcohol all over it and burn everything off. And that actually works fairly well too. I just didn't do that in this video. It was tempting, but uh, I didn't. Uh, so I'm pulling out these uh, radial bearings and the thrust bearings. I want to I want to re-grease the thrust bearings just to be safe. Problem is uh, these guys were stuck in there pretty hard so um, I used the old oven trick and uh, heated the oven up to 250 degrees and I ended up uh, putting the uh, the grip in the oven uh, just on a piece of parchment paper so I wouldn't you know uh, get junk all over the cookie sheet but I uh, put it in there for about 10 minutes and it basically expands the aluminum so you can pop out uh, those bearings. It's a good way to get that radial bearing out too in the front if it's stuck. Uh, but once I got the bearings out of uh, all of the blade grips, um, I'm going to clean them out. And I'm going to use this long-term two uh, thrust bearing grease that comes with the kit. I know a lot of people have a preference of different types of grease to use on the thrust bearings. Uh, but, you know, this is as good as anything else I have around. Uh, the downside is, of course, as I mentioned in the unboxing video, if you watch that, is that it's black. And a lot of people don't use it just for that reason. But uh, what the heck. I've got it on hand. It's right here. I'm just going to use it. So I made my little thrust bearing sandwich, uh, I like to call it. And just remember, uh, the larger inner diameter hole goes uh, in towards the uh, the center of the of the head. And the smaller one is on the outside of that. So it's laid out in the manual pretty clearly. But... Uh, something to make sure you keep in mind. And then I'm just going to line everything up, push it in there, and uh, get it seated. And don't forget there's that little shim, and then uh, get that lined in there. And then the other radial bearing on the outside of the grip goes in next. All righty. All right, that's how everything looks. Now I am using this 262 red thread locker that comes in the kit. Uh, turns out this is a perfect thread lock uh, for uh, helis in general. And matter of fact, I'm going to begin using this for pretty much everything. Now there are several different types of balls. There's this one big ball, and then there's a couple of balls with shoulders, and then several balls without shoulders. So the point here is just make sure you know which ones are which because the manual is going to you know, show you a picture, but just pay attention to where you're putting things. And on this red thread lock, you don't need to use a lot of it. Uh, it's going to hold really well. And I know people say red is permanent, but actually it comes off not too bad. Uh, even without heat, I've been able to, uh, to use this red thread lock. So these little balls are tiny, so you don't want to over torque them too much. Otherwise, you will snap them off while you're building. So they'll hold just fine. Just get them tight. Let the thread lock do its job. So also with the balls, there's also the, the screws. A lot of them are very similar. So even just a few millimeters difference between them. So what I find myself doing during the build is measuring to make sure I know which screw is rich because I don't want to install something and then find out later on that I've got the wrong length uh, and, uh, and go figure out and take it all apart again. So... All right, we're going to get this rotor grip lever on and, uh, again, a little bit of thread lock and then get the post on there and just tighten it down. Snug, not overly tight. 
Perfect. Set that on the end of the grip and then using the eight millimeter screws to uh, screw that down. Now I'm not gonna show you me putting thread lock on every single part. Just know if it's metal screws going into metal parts, it's getting thread lock, period. Uh, there's no other way around it. So uh, I will probably show you that periodically to remind you, uh, but uh, you, you, thankfully I will spare you from uh, watching me put thread lock on every single screw. All right, now we're going to put uh, this ball arm onto the swash plate. Again, tighten that down. And that goes on the side that uh, these are opposite. The There's a side with a slot. Uh, these go opposite that. And then that one big ball, the lonely ball, will go uh, in that one spot uh, where that little slot is in the screw. All right, now we're, uh, we're cooking. So got some of these with the shoulders, and those are going to screw into the swash. Again, I can't stress enough. I know people that will uh, snap these balls uh, trying to tighten them down too much. Don't do it. All right, so we got some bags of plastic parts here. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, just snap these uh, off. These are the uh, just just from packaging, so you can snap these little things off uh, and uh, don't worry about it. And it's a two-piece uh, damper system, so there's a harder black plastic piece and then uh, the rubbery red piece. I'm just making sure I get them in there nice and snug, and then the uh, the red rubber piece goes inside. So for the spindle, I'm using this 100% uh, silicone grease. I like silicone for this. It works out really well. Uh, you can put a little bit inside there uh, or put a little bit on the spindle itself. Just a little bit, though. What you don't want is it all gooping up and getting inside your threads on that thing. So, uh, But it really does help uh, get everything pushed through. So once you get it through, you know, get it centered, and then uh, you know, I clean off all the excess. Now this bag contains a bunch of shims, and we're gonna need these shims to get our blade grips set uh, exactly right. So there's four shims per side, and they vary in uh, thickness. So I'm gonna start out with the two middle-sized shims uh, because I'm told that you know that works well for a lot of people. So I'm putting those two on, leaving the super skinniest one and the fattest one alone. And uh, Go ahead and get everything on. Just tighten it down. No thread lock here for this part because I just want to test and see uh, how much play and movement I have. And uh, thankfully, the uh, kit does come with some of these uh, Allen wrenches, so it'll be helpful uh, for those uh, grip bolts. All right, you can see I've got a little bit of play in here. It moves really freely, but just a little bit more play than I'd like. You can just see that right there. So I'm going to take the whole thing apart, and uh, I'm going to add in those smaller shims on top. So now I'm using three shims per side, the three smallest ones, leaving the biggest one, which I think is like a, a millimeter or something. Again, just setting it in place to test. All right, once I get it tightened down, uh, this feels nice. Everything moves uh, nice and smooth, and there's actually zero play now. So I think that's what I'm going to go with. And now I'm just going to go ahead and add some thread lock to the spindle bolts. All right, that part is done. And you can see here, make sure you get your post facing the right direction. Alrighty, now we're going to work on the control levers. Again, measuring the bolts so I know which ones go where. So 
there's a little sleeve that goes in there and then uh, a washer onto that little bolt. And then I'm going to push that through the lever and then apply thread lock afterwards. Because what I don't want to do, if I don't have to, is run uh, thread lock through that. I don't want to get it on the bearing. These are nice and smooth, even when snug down uh, nice and tight. That is a nice feeling. That doesn't happen on very many kits. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do the same thing on the other one. And you can see how the balls line up on each side. There's going to be a link that connects those two. All right. So I've got these little sleeves and these little bearings, and now we're going to work on the uh, the washout linkage here. All right, and these super tiny little screws we'll use to hold those linkages on. And again, it's nice to have a kit where you can actually snug down the screws and everything still moves smoothly. Um, it's just, it's nice. I've left, I've built a lot of kits where you have to uh, leave the screws just a little looser than you're comfortable with, otherwise it binds up. So no binding at all on any of this stuff. All right, now we'll get the main shaft. And uh, I'm going to slip that up inside the head, and you can see there there's actually going to be four screws that are going to hold that head onto the main shaft, two on each side. I'm uh, putting these in a little bit loose until I get all four in, and then I'll go and once I get that last one in, I'll just snug them all up. Alrighty. I'm going to go ahead and add this uh, top button on. Now we're going to get these links out. These are the only links you have to build in the entire kit. Every other link for the, uh, the head control is fixed. So all that geometry is already fixed. This is the only place and this is just so you can adjust your zero pitch. Um, so I made both of these. Make sure you put them on right uh, with the uh, inner diameter, the smallest inner diameter on the outside. And uh, basically that's with the Thunder Tiger label facing out away from the ball. All right, there's our two links. Again, fascinating that those are the only two links I had to make, uh, which I'm very excited about that. So I slipped this wash on. Now I'm going to put these washout arms on. All right. Uh, that is pretty much uh, our head assembly. We've got these two extra shims left that I didn't use, and that's it. I used every other single part that was in that bag. And there we go. There is the completed head. So next we will move on to the uh, tailbox and then we'll go to the frame. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.